Do you want more stars and forks on your project? Do you struggle to get your open source project to stand out from the crowd? In this video, we're gonna talk about the tips and tricks and how you can get your open source project to stand out so you can get more engagement and more contributions. It's great to wake up in the morning and have two, three, four, five pull requests waiting for you to review on your project. Imagine raising an issue or an idea and someone solving that bug, adding that feature to your project and people coming up with new ideas and finding bugs and logging them for you. My YouTube channel is about getting you into open source so you can not only accelerate your learning but also accelerate your career so you can get the job and money and projects that you deserve. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel below and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I go live and post a video. As you can see behind me, I've picked one of our community open source projects and let's go through to see what stands out and what you should do to your project. When we all go to a repo, there are certain parts of the repo page that catch our eye. For example, on this page, there are 48 issues. The number 48 is not important, but having a number next to the issues to show that there is planning going into the project and that it's active. If you don't know what an issue is, an issue is where you start the conversation of an idea or logging a bug. Let's go take a quick look. So we've picked this issue here. As you can see, someone's raised it. It's been 23 hours ago and they've logged a bug that they think happens with our bot and they've put a screenshot. So it's really good that we can actually see what's going on. And as the project maintainer, I can add a label to it. So that's what an issue looks like. Going back to the repo page, the next thing that catches my eye is the pull request number. This number again isn't important, but it's important to have a number there rather than nothing. It shows that people are contributing to the project and the project is active. If you don't know what a pull request is, a pull request is actually making the changes to the project that was raised in the issue. So as I showed you the issue before, it was a bug. If someone wants to fix that bug, they will make the changes in their fork and they will contribute those changes back via a pull request so the project maintainer can review the changes, ask for changes or accept the changes. And if we come down a little bit now, the next thing that jumps out to me are the branches. The number here is actually more important because it's important to have multiple branches. You might have a main branch, you might have a development branch and then some feature branches going on. But if the number gets too big, if it gets to double figures, then this is actually a bit worrying because it shows that people aren't cleaning up their branches behind them. When the pull request gets merged, you should really delete the branch so that stale branches don't get left around and avoid confusion. And if you don't know what branches are, branches are a copy of the main code base but allows you to make changes without affecting the rest of the team. And when you're ready for the team to review those changes, you can re create a pull request. A pull request is requesting changes to be reviewed from one branch to another. The next part that jumps out are tags. Tags here are really low and the number here is also important, but this number should increase and get bigger with time as the project grows and as the project matures. A tag or a release is where you're happy with the state of the project. It's a production ready asset. A tag is made up of multiple commits between releases, between tags. And what a commit is, is when someone makes a change and actually saves it and says, I made this change, this is the save point. So you might collect some of these up and then a release or a tag becomes a collection of commits. If you would like me to dive into more details in any of these sections, please leave a comment below and I'll make new videos on those sections for you. The next thing, I'm recording this now. The next thing that jumps out to me is the commit at the top, the latest commit. So we can see here the latest commit was four hours ago and it shows that the project is still active. And it also shows that we have 385 commits. So the project is in a healthy state. It's not just had one giant commit where the project was worked on for a month and one massive commit was made to make it open source on GitHub. It's important to document your journey by making commits every time you're happy with a piece of work. And if we come down to the right hand side, you will see we have a description about the project. Again, this is really important. It's important to have one strong sentence about what your project does. The name is important, but I know the name of projects, you are limited to what you can put up there. So if it can be descriptive, that is great. And a lot of people like to have some quirky and fun names, 
but the description on the right here, just under the about, is really important to explain in one line what your project does. Underneath the description, GitHub gives you the ability to put a link to a deployed version of the project, documentation to anywhere you want, and I highly recommend utilizing that. You can put more links in your readme below and we will get to that shortly. Topics are really important so people can get understanding of maybe what technologies you're using, what area your project is trying to solve, fintech, healthcare, etc. And then if you have a readme and a license, highlights these with clickable badges so it makes it easier for people to go have a look. And trust me, they will go have a look. A readme and a license is really important. And we're going to go to the insights tab in a second where you can get some insights into your repo. And the latest release is shown here on the right. So if I actually click on that and show you, it will take us to a release that we created. And here you can put release notes, which is really useful. I've just put one line, pre-Docker, but it's actually more important to have some release notes, some change log, what changed in this release, what changed between this release and the previous one. And you can put a markdown in there where you can really make it visually pleasing. Then as we scroll down, you can also see there are contributors and you can see we have 28 contributors here. So it shows the project is inclusive and wants contributors. Whereas if you have a project with one or two contributors, people might think it's not a project worth contributing to. And this will grow and get better with time. So as you get one, or two more contributors, it snowballs and you'll get more and more contributors. I highly recommend helping people to contribute to your project because it will allow your project to get even more contributors. And then GitHub shows the languages and technologies that are used within the project, which is really good because some people want to contribute to projects that are focusing and specifically using certain technologies and languages. But remember, GitHub is a social network. It is not just about code. Open source is actually more about communication and collaboration. That's the great thing about upskilling on GitHub, you will learn how to communicate better, more efficiently, more concisely, which are really important skills to have. As a developer with over 15 years experience, I don't spend all my time coding. I spend time pairing with people, communicating with people, talking about new features, talking about improvements we can make. And then we go on and do those coding changes. It is important you are able to communicate with people via issues, via pull requests, via comments and replies. And the next part that is very important is the readme. And you're not going to get the readme perfect straight away. So I highly recommend just getting started with the readme. Maybe put in what technologies are required to run your project. Do you need Node version 12 or higher? Do you need Postgres, MySQL, etc.? That's a really good way to start. Then you can also add more to the description that you had at the top you could talk more about the goal of the project, why it's being created and why people should get involved. By making it appealing and visual, people will want to read more and dig in further. So I highly recommend putting a screenshot at the top. Maybe that's something I should do to my project. The people watching this, there's an issue and a pull request that you can create. You can then get a green square on your GitHub profile for today. Here we've list the features. I'm not saying this is the perfect readme, but I'm just trying to give you an example that a readme is important. By you looking at this readme, I'm sure you're spotting loads of improvements and missing content. If you do see any improvements, suggestions, ideas, there is a link to this repo in the description below. Please raise an issue with suggestions, ideas. We'll really appreciate it. And you'll get a green square on your GitHub account for today. And you know, green square a day keeps Eddie away. Okay, I did mention an insights tab. Let's go have a look. So if we go to the insights tab and then you go on the left, go to the community. This is really important, not only for your project, but for also for projects that you visit. Do have a look at this on the project that you want to contribute to. But in today's video, we're talking about being a maintainer. So on your repos that you want to get more contributions to, Go have a look at the community tab. What are you missing? Here we're missing an issue and a pull request template. You could make that contribution for us, but it's important to have a description, read me code of conduct. GitHub Git will put add buttons on most sections so you can easily add a code of conduct. And there are open source code of conducts that you can add. A lot of people won't contribute to your project if you don't have a code of conduct. If you don't have a license, and again, the license will have an add button next to it if you don't have a license. GitHub created an amazing project called Choose an Open Source License, and it gives you a high level overview of what the licenses mean. If you want something more open or a little bit more restricted. And it also gives examples of what projects use which license so you can get a better idea. If you want to see more choices and a comparison list, you can go to I want more choices. And here it will list a comparison between the different licenses. And you can actually 
hover them and it will give you more information about what actual each item means. I highly recommend going to have a look at this and I also highly recommend having your projects as open as possible. If you want to talk more about open source, don't forget to join our Discord. There's a link to it below. We're really inclusive in our community and we're really keen to help each other move our open source projects forward. So join our Discord, share a, a link to your GitHub profile, share a link to your open source projects and let's have a chat. And I also do open source project reviews. So if you go to our support repo on our community, there is a label that you can see open source project review. These are the reviews I'm gonna do next. And if you want to get yours reviewed, create a new issue, click on the button for review my open source link and share the link and we can have a look at it. And if you wanna join our GitHub community, then you can also click on invite me to the GitHub organization and you can join over 250 other people in our GitHub organization. If there are any areas on GitHub you want me to deep dive into, then let me know in the comments below and we can go deeper into issues, how to write an amazing issue, how to write an amazing pull request, how to create a really good release, how to use GitHub Actions on your projects. Let me know in the comments below and we can dig deeper. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. When a pull request gets merged, you should really delete the blah. And a tag is made up of multiple commits. That makes sense, yeah. So I highly recommend trying to help people contribute. Oops, can't speak.